Welcome to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. This is America's most visited national park and it's the only free national park in the country. I'm here in winter to explore some of the 500,000 acres that straddle Tennessee and North Carolina. And it's January, it actually just started snowing right now, but I'm gonna be showing you some of the best things to do here in the winter. The name Smoky actually refers to this kind of like fog and haze that hangs over the mountains here. It's actually from vegetation, but from far away it looks like plumes of smoke, and that's where the historical name Smoky Mountains came from. My first trail here in Smoky Mountain National Park is going to be the Deep Creek Trail to Indian Falls. Now this trail is on the Bryson City side of the park, so on the southern end. It's about 4.3 miles and it's going to take us by not one, but two waterfalls on our first winter hike. The first waterfall is at just 0.1 miles. This is the Tom Branch Waterfall. It's super easy to get to, even for those that aren't super into hiking super close to the roadway and you come upon this beautiful waterfall. So definitely recommended even if you aren't a hiker. Now in the summertime, this river, the Deep Creek, is frequented by people with inner tubes and lots of others just swimming in the waters. Now, obviously you can see I've got my hat and gloves on. It is about 40 degrees today. So it's actually a little bit warmer um, than it has been, but in the winter time here in Smoky Mountain National Park, the great thing about this southern section is that it doesn't usually get snow, so you get these kind of fall colors all throughout the year. The coolest little river crossing I've ever seen. This little one boarded bridge takes you right across the river. Just watch where you're going. There are certainly no shortage of trails here in the Smoky Mountains. There's actually over 800 miles of trails here in this park. 70 plus miles of the Appalachian Trail also goes through this park. And if you're wanting to do backpacking trips or multi-day camping trips, there are a ton of options with dozens of trails that are more than 15 miles in length. And there's more than a dozen waterfalls. Now that was a successful first hike. I cannot wait to see what else Smoky Mountains has in store for us. So we are heading back right now and we're going to head a little bit farther north towards Cherokee and see what else we can find. Right now I'm at a replica of what an old farmstead would have looked like here in the Southern Appalachian Forest. And back before this was a national park, there used to be a ton of people that actually lived in this area throughout the woods and set up farmsteads and homesteads. Now, this is actually one of the visitor center here in the national park, but they set up this replica farmstead so you can kind of get an idea of what it would have been like to live here a couple hundred years ago. One of the things I was really excited to see here in the Great Smoky Mountains were the elk. Now elk actually went extinct here in the park a long time ago and it's been a conservation success story here because they were actually reintroduced. Today there's over a hundred that live in the park and I wasn't sure we were going to get to see any but one of the best places to stop is the visitor center right when you enter the park north of Cherokee, North Carolina and today we're pretty lucky. When you're coming up from Georgia or North Carolina, the main road you're gonna be on is called the New Found Gap Road. And this road, after you pass by the Okanalufti Visitor Center, is gonna take you up all the way through the park and spit you out in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Now, right now, it's just so pretty. And this road actually follows along the river, so you can pull over at just so many different stops along the way and Fishing is really popular up here in the Smokies too, so if you are interested in fishing, definitely bring your fishing pole because you're gonna wanna stop at just almost every pull off here because it's so beautiful. Now 
we're starting to drive up a little bit higher elevation and there's a little bit of glimmers of snow and ice now so the landscape is definitely changing and now that we're kind of up on this ridge line also you can see all of the forest now back in the 1800s and early 1900s almost all of these trees were gone they were logged almost to just pasture land and so once this area became a national park it gave a chance for all these trees to regrow. If you're looking for a winter hike that's pretty long then you can actually hike to Klingman's Dome. Now this hike in the summertime is only 1.4 miles but in the winter time it's 14. The road actually is closed from December to the end of March if you decide to do this hike, which I'm not going to do today, but I did want to show you, there's going to be lots of opportunities for those iconic standing in the middle of the road shots. <laughs> so if you're looking for one of those and some amazing views of the Smokies with nobody around, then I highly recommend this hike. This park gets more than 11 million visitors per year. So if you come here in the winter, you're almost sure to have fewer crowds than in the busy summer months. I just checked into my hotel here in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and I wanted to show you guys this map because this is the park and it shows you a great kind of glimpse of what I did today. Um, I'm staying at a place called the Bearskin Lodge and it was only a hundred dollars. I've got a fireplace and in the summertime there's a pool here. I'm sure it's much more expensive in the summer. So here is a map of the park. I actually started last night down in Bryson City and then today hiked Deep Creek. Then I drove up here to the Okanalufti Visitor Center which is where we saw that old uh, town and then I drove up this way past Newfound Gap, and then up this way, past the Sugarlands Visitor Center, to end in Gatlinburg. This is exactly what you need after a long day on the trails. And today, we might not get a long day on the trails because it's raining. The weather today is not in my favor, so I'm gonna try and wait it out a little bit, and I figured in the meantime, we could go grab some breakfast. I sat down at Crockett's Breakfast Camp for some delicious old school country cooking before heading back into the park. Right now we're driving down the Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail, a 5.5 mile one-way loop road, which is a favorite among many visitors to this area of the park. It's full of old growth forests, well-preserved log cabins, and some beautiful waterways. Yesterday at the visitor center that we stopped at, we saw one of the replicas of one of these old farmsteads. And if you drive along the Roaring Fork Motor Trail outside Gatlinburg, there are actually some real old farmsteads and homesteads from many years ago, back when people lived here before it became a national park in 1934. I'm not gonna lie, living out here in the woods probably would have been a pretty scary place back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. It was a lot more clear back then as a lot of this area was logged, but there would have been a lot more animals and it would have been really, really dark at night. Right up the road from that old farmstead is the starting point to Rainbow Falls Trail. Now, this trail is 5.4 miles round trip and takes you to a really beautiful waterfall. And if you continue on, you can actually get to the top of Mount LeConte, which is one of the 
one of the highest mountains here in the national park. You can also continue on from there to the Alum Cave Trail. So you'd make this big giant loop and it's a really pretty trail that you can do like an overnight camping or backpacking trip on because it is over 15 miles in length if you do the whole thing. But it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably one of the best hikes that I would recommend in this area. And we aren't gonna do the Rainbow Falls Trail right now, but if the rain lets off, we'll be back. The Smoky Mountains actually have the densest population of black bears on the Eastern seaboard. And because it's winter, we probably won't see one. They tend to come out in the early mornings and late evenings. Um, and in the winter time, they do what I like to call hibernapping because they don't hibernate for the whole winter, but they will take really long periods of sleep and they'll get up to relieve themselves, have a snack, and then go back to bed. So they're able to lower their body temperatures to almost freezing. Um, squirrels do this as well, but here it doesn't get too cold, so they're not gonna hibernate as long as they would in places like Alaska or other places where there's lots of snow. If you do see a bear on the trail, it's very important that you do not approach it. You always wanna back away slowly, make yourself known. If it does start to come towards you, you can make a lot of noise, make yourself look bigger than you actually are. And another thing that you need to know about bears is to make sure you have proper food storage. So if you are camping out here or backpacking, make sure that everything is in a bear canister. Do not litter on the trail because this can actually kill the bears, not because of them eating your garbage, but because it brings them closer to people and makes them less afraid. And a lot of the times this ends up in the bears having to be euthanized and caught after they've gotten into people's cars or homes. So please be bear aware and make sure that you're doing what you need to do to make sure the bears stay safe. Now I've driven over to Townsend, Tennessee to the northwestern section of the park here and I'm in an area uh, pretty close to Cades Cove which is a super popular place to come in the summer months and if you come in the summertime it's actually really awesome if you are a biker because on Wednesdays and Saturdays they close this loop road um, that is called Cades Cove Road and it's actually only open to people on bikes so it's a great place to come and hit the trail if you are a biker. Some parts of the Smoky Mountains actually get so much rain that it's technically a rainforest and I think you guys can tell by looking around here that even though it's winter everything is so green. All right we found another trail. We are on the Spruce Falls Trail. This is near the Smoky Mountain Institute at Tremont, which is a uh, research and education center that has all kinds of great activities and scholarships as well. This trail is just two miles round trip. It's a short one and uh, can't wait to see what we find at the end. If you're a rock lover like me, then you're going to love looking around the trails here because there's a ton of quartz, pretty pink quartz. It's everywhere and there's tons of colorful rocks here. Fun fact, growing up, my family and I actually had a rock tumbler. So one of the things we would always do on hikes is look for rocks and we'd bring them home and we'd put them in the rock tumbler, which luckily was in the garage and <laughs> turn that thing on for two days of really loud tumbling, but you ended up with beautiful rocks in the end. One of the other things I'm loving about this trail is that this is the first time we've really had the mountains in view with a great representation of that fog and mist that's coming out of the mountains that give the Smoky Mountains their name. Okay, so there's this weird fungus. I'll show it to you guys. On this branch, I've seen it like a couple places in the woods, but it's pretty weird looking. So if anybody knows what this is, I would love to find out. The rain has 
has gone away. It is a beautiful day now and I am so excited because right now I'm going to be taking you guys up the Alum Cave Trail to Mount Leconte, which is a mountaintop here in the park and I am just thrilled that the rain is gone. It's about 10.5 miles round trip and we're going to be starting right here crossing a river and it's going to take hopefully less than six hours so let's get going. Pretty chilly this morning. I think it was about 38 when I got out of the car. So I do have quite a few layers on today. I've got a smart wool long underwear on the bottom uh, underneath my hiking pants. And I've got a smart wool on under this jacket as well. Uh, smart wool, I love. Wool really is great at not only wicking moisture, but keeping you warm, especially if it's the base layer up against your skin. I wore it on Kilimanjaro and it kept me really nice and warm. On this trail, you're gonna pass through this little cavern at around 1.25 miles. Mile two, we are just getting over the tree line here. And now you can really see the mountain ranges. We just reached Alum Cave. This is actually where most people turn around. It's about two and a half miles in, and it's not really a cave much so as a giant overhang here where there's lots of icicles and water dripping down. Makes for a really great place to stop. We're about three and a half miles in now, and <sighs> definitely working up a sweat. Uh, the last about mile of the trail has been pretty icy, so a couple of things that I highly recommend that you have in your backpack for hiking here in the Smokies in winter or really hiking anywhere where there might be ice and snow is to have a good pair of micro spikes, which I do have in my bag. If it gets a bit icier here, I'll probably throw some on. And trekking poles are just such a great resource to have especially if you don't have great balance or you're carrying a heavy pack. Two things I always do before heading off on a hike are one, I check the weather, and two, I go on All Trails. All Trails is a website and an app where you can download trail maps and you can also read reviews from recent hikers to get a better idea of the trail conditions. In the home stretch now, over four miles. And the micro spikes have come on because the trail has gotten really icy. Almost there, and check out these views. Hello, Smoky Mountains. We are at the top of Mount LeConte. Right now I'm at the Mount LeConte Lodge, which is closed right now, but this place was actually built in 1925. It's the only lodging within Great Smoky Mountain National Park. And if you hike up here and stay, you're gonna have some of the most amazing views of the Smoky Mountains. I made it up here in just under three hours and it's time for lunch. So I'm gonna have a quick snack and then I'll show you guys a little bit more of the view.
After taking some time to watch the clouds roll in over the Smoky Mountains, it was time to bid farewell to America's most visited national park.